Right guys, welcome to Emerge Elite. This is a fitness community program and stuff. This is something new that I've decided to start doing and luckily I've roped my good friend Tori into being the first victim of it. So basically what we're going to do is you see a lot of fitness influencers out there and influencers in general get asked the same bog standard question throughout interviews of like how much protein you're eating, like <laughs> how's your prep going and so forth. So we're going to ask questions that kind of expand those boundaries and kind of so you get to get more of an insight of them and get to see actually what the industry is really like so here i have my good friend tori hello <laughs> tori is it's a wbff pro correct yeah she is competing in america later on in the year which is amazing so she is going unfortunately it's not that much later in the year anymore it's may isn't it april april yeah i've got 10 weeks babe Oh God. Oh, April. For brunch. <laughs> so April, and um, you've be, you've done fitness modeling. You're a fitness influencer. Um, you also, what I really like about Tori is that she's very mindful. A lot of the things that she does is very you you very, very spiritual. Conscious. Of yeah. What actions I pursue. Yes. If you check her out, I'll put a link at the bottom of her Instagram. You definitely will get a lot of value from this woman. And no. hopefully through this video, you're going to get even more value. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. I'm quite tired, so please don't judge. <laughs> I was going to say, if you got the conversation we just had over brunch, that would I be mean, that, was, that was magical. That was magical. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm, the coffee's starting to wear off. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. So the first thing that I want to uh, say is like thank you for being cool. on here and everything, yeah, cool. which is normal, everything that we're going to go into. Um, any of the questions I will, as a disclaimer on here, any of the questions you don't actually have to answer if you don't want to. Cool, I'll I'm let you know. <laughs> I'm also willing that this is not always just going to be one-sided, the questions are going to come back at me because you guys weirdly want to know what I get up to. So, we're just going to crack straight into it. So, when did you actually start becoming successful in being a fitness influencer? Um. I, I, I personally would say that I'm still waiting for that to happen. Okay. Um, I mean, I first kind of got into fitness back in 2014, mm -hmm. where I s saw someone else competing and decided that I wanted to pursue it. Yeah. Obviously, it was purely for the aesthetic reasons. Um, I did my first competition and I was pretty much skin and bones. <laughs> um, I had zero muscle at that point, so I'd hardly obviously been training. Then I took a full year out to train and I built a lot of muscle and that's when I started getting into training. But again, the bottom line was still for the aesthetic purpose. Um, and that continued and it was great. Like I realised that the gym and fitness was kind of like my meditation, that if I felt stressed and went to the gym, I'd feel better. Mm -hmm. But again, it wasn't a, a mindful decision. It was yeah. very much my subconscious. Um, and then as through other things in my life kind of progressed and changed dramatically i then understood the importance of fitness mm -hmm. and not just for the aesthetics and as soon as i felt that i kind of which was only over the last like 18 months i stopped caring about the aesthetics yeah and focused more on like my nutrition and deconditioning my brain as to how i previously ate yeah. which was if i wasn't prepping it's what do i fancy mm -hmm. what do i want what couldn't I eat in prep? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, whereas now, like, my prep foods are pretty much the same as what I eat or have a the rest of this year. Yeah. Because now, if I go out for a meal, then I'll enjoy it. Yeah. The rest of the time, I eat for the sake of what food is for, which is health yeah. and for energy. Yeah. Other than that, I am bothered. Um, so reconditioning my mind and really focused on kind of my own actual well-being... Mm -hmm. Not just sitting there thinking, I want to be mindful, I want to go to yoga, like, going inside out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's when actually the aesthetic changes started to take place. I don't know whether it was the aesthetic changes or whether it was my perception of my aesthetic appearance that changed. Yeah. Um, but I just became more comfortable in my own skin and I started appreciating my body more for the functions that it had. Yeah. And in turn, just accepting and going with my appearance more so I mean hopefully that that's I think whenever you're true to yourself that kind of comes across in influencing yeah as it is yeah um rather than me purposely going out and trying to influence anyone I'm just doing my thing going along on my journey yeah and yeah so maybe maybe in the last year or so yeah when I've started being more true to myself and people can 
subconsciously buy into that more. Yeah, so they're getting a lot more value out of it. Yeah, rather than, you know. I mean, I don't post workout videos because I don't, anybody can go on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the industry is absolutely flooded with it, that sort of content. It's literally saturated in it. So I might put it on my IG story. Yeah. Or if I want, if I'm prepping for a competition, I'm sure I'll end up putting up some workout bits simply because my body's that much leaner. You can see the yeah. muscles contracting. It's a bit yeah. more interesting to watch. But other than that, I am trying to be more mindful as to what I put out there as to whether it will actually add value to people's lives. Because I don't want to take... We all do it. We were talking about this earlier. You end up sitting there scrolling through and wasting so much time. Yeah. So if somebody comes across my post, I don't want to waste their time anymore. Yeah. I, I want to add at least... 10 seconds of value by them reading that plant a seed they can think about it later yeah so and also you've traveled a lot <laughs> like you're always somewhere why why are you such a gypsy why can't you stay in one place <laughs> like last time i remember like i text you and you're in bloody america or somewhere um was it abu dhabi um do you do you think that 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 is like enhanced Oh, um, your yes. like mental state. One thousand percent. I was talking to someone about this the other day, right? And I was thinking, like, when when did my because this is taking not from the fitness aspect whatsoever, but in regards to my own mindset and when I became uh, so much more empathetic and thoughtful to others. I was like, mm-hmm. I feel like I've had a different journey to a lot of other people yeah. sometimes, not in a in an arrogant way or anything like that, but. I sometimes wonder why I was wired the way that I am. Yeah. And I think one key point for me was in 2007, so I was 17, and the guy who lived opposite the road from me was a social worker. Right. He'd taken a year off to travel. Right. And during his travel, he'd gone to South Africa. Okay. And he'd gone to this school, and basically this school, amazing school, um, just outside of Cape Town. And it was kids from the townships, but yeah. who had a gift to learn. It's not that they were necessarily the most intelligent, but they had a desire and ability to want to progress. Yeah. So, I mean, some of these kids were travelling like 30 miles from a township to get to school. To get to school. Crazy. And so, anyway, he came back and then he was like, I want to do a cultural trip with youths from the area and take them out there. Yeah. So it started off with uh, a group of people from Wokingham Mm -hmm. and then a group of people from Reading. Yeah. And we started off by doing a cross-culture with that. When you live literally, what, three miles apart? Yeah, and how different it can be. How different it can be. So that started it. Um, And then we went over to South Africa and we got to work with these kids. Yeah. And that was just incredible. Like, I still am keeping contact with some of them because it was insane. I did it again. I went back again in 2008, fortunately. But I remember, I think, I can't remember which year it was. We took them to Nando's. Right. I took the kids to Nando's, thought nothing of it. We sat at the table. They all start crying. Yeah. I'm like, yo, why are you crying? <laughs> Never been to a restaurant before. Wow. Like. And then the things we take for granted. A restaurant. Nando's. <laughs> a, a Nando's. Cheeky yeah. Nando's, whatever you want to say. Like, and that for me was such a huge deal. Yeah. And I think by putting myself in those kind of scenarios and seeing other cultures. Yes. It set my soul on fire. I'm yeah. not going to lie to you, like. Especially music. Again, we discussed this earlier in the car. <laughs> but I remember I first got to Cape Town and we just did like the touristy bit and went down to the Victoria and Albert um, yeah. waterfront. And there were people like playing music and dancers and stuff like that. And the second year, me and one of the girls, there was a, a band doing like the, what do you call it? Do you feel like the conga stuff? The, no, the wooden, you mean the bongos? Bongos. Bongo. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to go to the Congo. Um, the bongos and no, it's like a xylophone. Wouldn't right, they? okay. So they're all doing their little music, and I was like, yeah, I can feel it in my belly. So me and this girl just start dancing. Mm. Like, it brought a crowd of over forty people. Oh wow! It was crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, back from that, I think that's really helped me. It whenever I did a post about it, so <laughs> I put it's true that some of the world's truest beauty lies in the diversity of its people. Language and culture are the frameworks which language and culture are the frameworks through which humans experience communication and understand their current reality. However, with everything that goes on in the world, it's vital that we take the time to learn, understand, accept and appreciate cultures other than our own. If we all took the time to talk and to listen, we can begin to unite on a universal understanding. Coming to a realisation our fundamentals and core values all stem from love, regardless of our beliefs. 
judgment and prejudice perceptions would decrease and unity would prevail. So if you don't understand, just ask. And if you don't agree, just accept. And I think that from traveling, I've really understood that yeah. you take a little piece. Everybody's got something to offer. Everybody's got a new perspective on something. Yeah. And even if you don't necessarily agree with it, it's going to challenge your own thought press process to either strengthen it or to think of it in yeah. a different light. Yeah. Um, sorry, that was a complete ramble, which is often what I do. I think that's 90 percent of our conversations. Yeah, this is true. But <laughs> conscious ramble. Yeah, conscious ramble. Mm. At least it's not rambling about my mindless. I'm really thing. sorry. I put you on the squeaky sofa. All right, I'll just squeak around. They're gonna enjoy it. <laughs> Going to follow us to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. okay. So a big question that I've always wanted to ask someone because I have a very big opinion on this. Uh oh. Um, is is what's your viewpoint on time? Because I push persistence and patience. Something I wrote earlier. Because <laughs> <laughs> I push a lot of persistence and patience, and I think it's a very fine line between the two. I think you need to be super persistent in anything that you want, but you also have to have major patience that it's not going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, if if you want to become like a, a, in your case, you know, like you weren't born with a bikini model physique. Oh, no. You know, you've worked at it and you've worked over it at consistent years. And that's why people who sometimes are 10 years into their career and then people are like, damn, they're good now. Mm -hmm. And they look great three years ago, but it's taken those seven yeah. years, seven, you know, or more to get there. Yeah. And um, so I just kind of want your viewpoint on like, uh, on like time and aspects okay. of time. And how do you view it compared to like some other people, you know, they say that they waste a lot of time. You know, people, some people have viewpoints that if you sit in front of a TV, you're wasting time, which to someone else, it doesn't mean so, that. So I've got three, three parts to this. The first part, which I think is the fundamental and the underlying with all of this is expectations, mm. um, which kind of ties into what you just said. I actually had not a debate, but a discussion on this the other day because I'm a strong advocate of living without expectations. It's something I learned through somebody else only about 18 months ago. Yeah. And at first the concept to me seemed completely uh, abstract. Like, how can you not expect, like, how are you ever going to progress in life if you don't expect to get somewhere? Yeah. And it, played on, it planted a seed though, like I just said. Like, certain conversations plant seeds. And it was probably... Maybe last autumn, summertime, I was taking a walk around the na lo local nature park, as I do. And I was talking to my best friend, Kel, about it. And you know, I love an analogy. So then I broke it down. I was like, yo, I've got it. So this is how I describe living without expectations. Is you have, you've planted a seed. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can have all the, the hope that it will grow. And yeah. you will do everything. You will persist in yeah. watering it. Yeah. You do everything that you need in order for it to grow. Yeah. But you can't expect it to grow. No. If it blooms, you appreciate that. Yeah. Great. If it doesn't, okay, keep moving. Yeah. Whereas if you expect something, you're setting yourself up to have that kind of failure or yeah. for something to not go according to plan. May take longer, again, time. Yeah. May take longer than you expect. And yeah. then you automatically deem that you failed. No, it's not. It's just part of the process. Yeah, exactly which also like, like ties into acceptance. So I think that's kind of the fundamental part. Mm. The second part is time is relative and time is a concept. Like yes. what, what really is time? The mm. fact is the past we have no control of, the future we have no control of, yeah. all we have is that present moment. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, time's a funny one as well. Yeah. Time is one of those ones where you can I spread think, off into I think a people million focus too much on it, if I'm yeah. being honest. Yeah. Just focus on your life. Don't worry about the time it takes. Yeah. Don't worry about the time of day. Just do whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Like, and then the third thing is like, you know, when you say people talk about wasting time watching TV. I had a conversation. Um, and do you know what? I will actually shout out Reggie Yates for this one. We were talking about, um, I, it's when I'd first moved to LA and I was saying yeah. like, I felt quite lazy because I'd come, I'd come from being on prep. Yeah. So my food was monitored, my gym was monitored. I was still working in a corporate environment. Yeah. I quit all that. So I had my days 
like everything in my life was routine. Yeah. I quit it all. Mm -hmm. Moved to LA for three months. The first couple of weeks, I felt so lost mm -hmm. because I had zero routine whatsoever. Like I could eat whatever I wanted. I could train if I wanted to. If I didn't want to, I didn't have to. I was not working. I was just living, existing. And he made a point to me. He's like, Tori. He's like, the thing is, he's like, and I looked. I was talking to him about his life, and obviously he'd been doing amazing. And I was like, yeah, but you're doing all this. He's like, yeah, but. Some days, if I choose to do nothing, I don't see that as me doing nothing anymore because I have an intent yeah. to do nothing. Yeah. So therefore, I am consciously making that decision to do nothing. Yes. And all of a sudden, as my as time kind of progressed, as soon as I started to accept, I'm not working, I'm doing nothing today. Yeah. Or today, I think I might go for a walk. Just being in that moment and doing what I wanted when I wanted. Yeah. And all of a sudden, opportunities started arising. I took the stress out of the equation. I stopped worrying about the what ifs or whatever. Because also, actually, just a point to make is when I'd been stressing about all of that, I was started to force myself to get up, go for a workout, do a yeah. vlog, da da da. As I just started to do that, went out for a workout that morning. For some reason, we decided to go to the park that day. I never go out and do stuff. It's normally at the gym. Rolled my ankle so bad, I had to go and get crutches. Couldn't walk for over three weeks. Yeah, that completely ruled out gym. Yeah, so that's cool. I do a vlog. I do a vlog and I talk about this whole injury thing. I was like, I'll quickly make a salad because I was really hungry. I bit my tongue so bad I couldn't talk for three days. <sighs> if that's not an omen, yeah, to sit down and shut up, I don't know what is. Yeah. So that's exactly what I did. And then, like I said, as I started accepting things and kind of just being in in what's the word that i'm kind of after intentional yeah. with all of my actions mm -hmm. like life just happens yeah it's good so that's my view on time <laughs> in about 15 minutes <laughs> yeah and then next so people don't like getting asked this question and okay. i've noticed this because i have asked quite a few people this question and a lot of people just refuse to comment but I think it's a, re it's a really simple question, and it's just honesty. So basically, <laughs> I always wiggle, <laughs> like I always move. I've got to be moving the whole time. <laughs> it's just my leg with By my, way, you know, my banana sock <laughs> shoe. I've, I've, got, I've got Mrs. Claus and Mr. Claus. <laughs> so basically, what do you think that the industry is doing wrong? What do you think it's lacking? Because obviously we've just said about it being over saturated with similar content all the time. Yeah. So in your own personal opinion, what do you think it's lacking and what do you think people need to do different, even if it contradicts what you're actually doing? Okay. Um, it's kind of two parts, but I want to touch on what they're doing right as well, because I yeah. think social media gets a lot of uh, slack, um, but ultimately it's down to us. We choose yeah. who we want to follow. True. Sure. So when people sit there and moan about all they ever see of these skinny fitness models or whatever, that's because they're the accounts you're following. Yes. Um, the things that are going wrong with it, what we discussed earlier over brunch, is the lack of authenticity. Yes. Um, everybody is out there to inspire, which is great. Everybody's got these beautiful intentions to go out there and make everybody a better, better you. Be yeah. the best version of yourself. Great. Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah. You just got to start being honest with yourself. Like, yeah, of course. none of us are always happy. Like, you and me, we probably are happy most of the time, to mm. be perfectly honest. But you know what? I even did a video the other day. Occasionally, I still suffer really badly from anxiety. Yeah. We've both been to the depths of depression and yeah. we've both come out. Yeah. Like, and I've suffered really badly from anxiety even about two weeks ago to the point I was felt so crippled I didn't know if I could walk into the studio to do the show that I do. Yeah. And. People just need to be more open with the struggles as well. Like, being vulnerable is such a gift that people just see as a weakness, and it's not. It's not a weakness. It's not. It's so beautiful to be able to share that, because as soon as you're vulnerable with people, like, not only are you being aware that you're experiencing lows, you're allowing yourself to actually experience the highs so much more as well. Yeah. Um, so that's what I think is missing. I think people have the great intentions but they're not being true to themselves. Like, how many pictures do I need to see with a random quote attached because the quote sounds good? Yeah. Like, 
But then don't compare yourself to anybody else. Just do you. Yeah, and then the caption underneath either is is uh, you know contradicting everything that they say, mm-hmm. or it's misleading, or it doesn't make well, sense. You, you can just see how it's worded. It's not a truth. It's yeah. either a copied and pasted, or it's a random like four points all into one that kind of. Um, that kind of distract you completely from the point Um, so it's not to put anybody down because like I said the intentions are positive the intentions are good and I think there's a big shift from when social media first came around it was very narcissistic to being more about trying to reach out to others Yeah, I don't think it's always again we've got to always be honest it's not always about just inspiring others it does make us feel good in the process yeah whether it's because of likes, some people like a like and they yeah. like a comment to tell them how beautiful they look. Other people put the stuff out there and just knowing that they're inspiring people makes them feel good. That's me. Like, that's my selfish part of it. When somebody comes to me and I'm like, I love that you've given me that perspective on something or I could have stu- I'm so glad that I read this right now. It's perfect timing. Mm. I'm like, yes. But not just for me because I'm. it gives me trust in kind of the universe and synchronicity and knowing that my timing is right. Yeah. But... I think it's just a case of people just need to be more genuine. Just stop worrying about what you think other people want. Mm. Focus on what you want to put out there. And you know what? If you're a narcissist and you want to just post pictures of yourself, who gives a shit what anybody else says? You yeah. just do that, boo. Yeah. Like, pfft, do exactly. whatever you want to do. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that worries me about the industry a lot, and it worries me about technology in general, mm. is that we thrive so much off, oh, yeah. off likes and follows mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff. And um, it's a scientific fact that the the same. So if you get drunk and everything like that, and you get these like yeah, yeah, and you get these like like feel good endorphins and mm-hmm. stuff like that. That's what your phone gives you. Yeah. Like I actually read some research on it, and I watched mm-hmm. some YouTube videos on it and stuff, and it's actually incredible. So you get the same feel good endorphins from a message. So that ding on your phone, you get the same endorphins from that that makes you feel good than you do from kissing your partner. Whoa, I thought you were going to say and getting drunk and I was like, well, at least you don't have a hangover. No. That's mad. Because it makes you feel good. I get it though, 100%. Because someone, like for me, I'm not going to lie, when Mm. I first started and stuff like that and then it was like you were liking some of my stuff and like other big influencers starting to notice me. I was on my phone all the time, waiting, waiting for that next thing, waiting for you to message me back to give me an opportunity to work with you. And so when like you start that. talking to someone, yeah. or you give me your number out, you wait for that text. Yeah, but then that's why people do it. And it's also, it's like, it's, a, it's fantastic in a way, but then at the same point, you've got to remember that you're, you're not living your life through a phone. We were talking Super. about it before. Uh, yeah, because that's the thing as well. I remember I got to a point a, a little while back, and sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, it creeps in. And if you're feeling like a little bit low and then all of a sudden you realise that you're using your phone to fulfil that. Yes. So you're posting up a picture and if you then get someone's attention and they then message you and be like, oh, you're looking really good, babe. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. Worked. Or you got a few people commenting and someone might have slipped in your DM and you're like, oh, you're kind of cute. Yay. Someone's yeah. appreciating me. Which is all great. That that's that little plaster sticker over yeah. your wound for the time being. But what happens when you post that picture for your attention, your little cry for help? You and don't get the response get you want. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, you're opening that wound up even more, and you make you're putting salt on it basically. Yeah, exactly. And it's and like we discussed this earlier about the whole plaster analogy. Yeah, I do love an analogy. You're good with analogies. So you've got, <laughs> you've got your wound, which is your underlying issues, for yeah. whatever reason. And sometimes it is just purely, we have anxiety, we have depression. There's normally a stem, but you might not be yeah. ready to delve into what that is. Yeah. You've got a little bit of a wound. And people, whether they use social media or whether they use other people as a plaster to cover that up for that time being. Yeah. And it's great for that time being. Yeah. Until after a while, the plaster begins to get less sticky and it opens up the wound again the wound yeah. hasn't had any air to heal so it's a fresh wound you're dealing with it again yeah you need to go and find yourself another plaster and, then you put it straight on again. and it's continual yeah whereas actually by dealing with the underlying issue at the time helping the wound to heal yeah then you're good you don't need any of these adding like yeah and that's what we were saying before like you you need to like i can, can come up with my own little quotes mm. 
you need to like really inspire yourself before you even try inspiring others. Because oh, like for me, I can flick through my phone and I can spend a lot of time on my phone if I really, really wanted to. Yeah. But the thing for me is when I post things, I don't have a set time that I post them. I don't have a set thing, you know, like I don't really have a schedule with my post. But then at the same point, I don't check it every five minutes to yeah. see what new likes I've got, got or anything like that. The only time I ever do it is really when people comment so that I can engage with them. Yeah. And it's the difference of where you do. You sit inside a, a restaurant environment and stuff. And, you know, you've got like 70% of the people in there will take out their phone yeah. at some point. One thing I will say is I think there's sometimes a difference though. Like, we've probably got relatively low, not low followers, but do you know what I mean? Like, if you're a person who is influencing, mm. that's your job. Yeah. You've got a million plus followers or even 500 plus followers, whatever. Anybody who's got high engagement. Yeah. You do need to be, unfortunately, you, you make that sacrifice like you would as an actor, like you would as a footballer, like you yeah. would as any kind of profession where you're in the, the public eye, Yeah. that you do need to document more. Yeah, but this is where the difference is. The difference is if you were an influencer, like you've done it today, you've posted, posted things today, mm. we've like discussed a few things and we've had our phones out and everything like that. If I was sat with another influencer who was documenting the restaurant we were in and stuff like that, that's absolutely fine. It's the people that go on and they're checking Facebook and they literally just scroll through. Mm. And then they, don't, they get their little hit of endorphins and then the phone goes down. Yeah. And then the thing that yeah, just worries me about that is that you're sat in company, and whether it's your friends mm. or even worse if it's your family. Well, yeah, partners, like, that's, you know, completely different. If you're going to take your phone out and snap your food and snap, oh, I'm on a great date or anything like that, that's fine. Yeah. I have absolutely no problems with that because, you know, it's, we have technology, yeah. it's part of the fun. But it's when you aimlessly yeah, try and yeah. find something that you're obviously, it's like feel sitting, like you're not getting it's from like the situation. It's like we're in a club on a night out. Yeah. Uh, and I've noticed it now, you look around and you're like, yo, are you actually out vibing or are you just on Snapchat? Because I'm pretty certain you can get a filter and just play some music back home if you want to go there. Yeah, <laughs> and it's probably cheaper. <laughs> right, it's crazy, crazy. But it is, it's, it's just like that kind of, because, I mean, we both, we both know influencers, uh, I, you know, you are one yourself. And in a way, so am I. Like I've posted, this will go up hopefully later. Um, I posted things of my work day today. Like technically it's my yeah. day off. This is just something I do on the side. But I posted me in Starbucks and then I posted me, you know, talking in the yeah. car and then I did this and then I did that. And you know, like I, I do it and you know, mm. I've got 1,700 followers. So, you know, like d am I doing it for a reason? Am I not? But I definitely don't do it for the endorphins. Yeah. Because I really, the way that I think about it, and sometimes it comes across quite harsh, is that I frankly do not give a shit yeah. what people think about me or what I'm doing or even if I'm influencing them or not. Yeah. Because it's like, as I said before, I'm inspiring myself before I'm inspiring others. I'm just showing people what I do. Yeah, exactly. That's it. I'm not trying to get a reaction out of someone. No. If nobody contacts me, if nobody wants to work with me, then fine, that's, the, that's them. That's what they want to do. <laughs> I hear you. So again, I want to thank Tori for obviously being here today. I hope you guys have taken a lot out of this. And I just got to like see a little bit more about basically how we think. <laughs> yeah. In I think way. sometimes like but when you ask those questions, you catch someone off guard and then it becomes more of a conversational piece. The subconscious mind kind of talks for you. Yeah. And it's also it's like, planned or... like people are like, they vibe up to you, you know, like they like look at you and look at you as an influencer and it's probably good for people to be able to see... A, a different side of it in mm. a way that's kind of like what i'm trying to get across yeah yeah, yeah no, so um so. yeah so thank you very much no, well, for appearing on the first ever episode yay. hopefully we'll get better lighting next time and it's pretty dark and yeah. uh, my house doesn't really do light i don't i really don't think this is the last time you're probably going to see tori you've no. already been on the channel before <laughs> no. i like to just put myself out there yeah so if you like this kind of content please leave a comment like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of jazz that we always say at the end as YouTubers. And we will check in with you next time. Peace. Peace.